This is the Marlin Jetty here in Cairns, and it's the hub of a thriving industry. Each season, international celebrities, Commonwealth Garden millionaires, and the cream of the world's game fishermen all congregate here to head off in search of the elusive marlin. And the marlin really is elusive. We're going out for a couple of days and we're going to try and get near one. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But I'll see you out there. Peter Bristow is well known as one of the top marlin skippers in the world, certainly the best in Australia on results alone. Marlin fishing is a rich man's sport. It costs $1,000 a day to hire Peter, his 40-foot vessel the Avalon, and accommodation on the very classy Ulysses with its crew of three. The Ulysses is anchored 40 miles offshore just inside the outer reef, and we nicknamed it the Barrier Reef Hilton. It stays out here for the three months of the marlin season and at the price you pay, everything is included from champagne to seasick pills. I'm joining Don and Gloria Tyson from Arkansas who've invited me to share their first Australian fishing trip. Up on the side there. Yes. Hi. Hi. Come Hiya. forward. <laughs> yes. Susie, you're mad. Don Gloria Tyson. Good day, Don. Hi, I'm glad to see you. How do you do? We're going fishing together. I understand we're going to look for the black marlin. Uh huh. Have you caught any yet? No, we've been waiting on you. I understand that uh, with your luck, why the fish are out there, <laughs> we'll, we'll get together on it. <laughs> we will. We will. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Gee, this isn't a bad little uh, dinky. We'll no. do our best to make you comfortable while you're out here. <laughs> After all day fishing on that thing, this 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 is very, very comfortable. Yeah, that tosses around a bit. <laughs> nice to come home to. <laughs> come home and settle you down. <laughs> yeah, well, Pete calls it the home away from home, he said. <laughs> well, listen, Pete, as you know, I've never been fishing before. But big game. What sort of things um, do I need to know? Well, you don't need to know a hell of a lot, except to be uh, out there at the right time of the year. Well, all we've got to look for is blue water. Not only was the lifestyle a lot more uh, comfortable bait. than I'd expected, and but the approach of the skippers and fishermen and is much more conservation-minded than I'd thought. Or do you tag... Uh, you tag 90% of the fish. 90% of your fish. Over the, over the period of time that the fishing here has been developed, we found that you don't catch fish in the morning. You're virtually so wasting you your time away, before yeah. midday. You may as well go swimming on the coral and uh, after that catch some bait and then go fishing. But don't take any bananas with you. What's the thing about the bananas? Well, you just, in the Pacific, you don't take bananas on a boat. Well, I, it's, it's a superstition that dates way back in Hawaii. Yeah. The canoes that migrated to the Hawaiian Islands that had bananas on them, never reached the island. Get away. No, not at all. And the fishermen that go out of Hawaii daily fishing, if a, if a banana is on the boat, traditionally they'll never get back to dry land. Well, I had this like experience the last there. year on the Odyssey, uh, which was this sort of sister ship to the Odysseys we're on now. And we had uh, bad luck for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I eventually said to the Spaniards around, well, where are the bloody bananas? And lo and behold, Paul Kemsler from Tradewinds had put a bunch of dried bananas in their package of goodies. 
and we went down below and found this bunch of dried bananas. We threw them over the side. We caught 3,000 pounders right in a row after that. A fellow named Bristol has a hell of a reputation in our country and uh, also uh, over here, I understand. And I believe you've done a fair bit of uh, game fishing. I try to fish a week a month for, for marlin, and I fish uh, Ecuador and Panama, but mostly the Bahamas, which are off the eastern shore of the United States. And the blue marlin are home there, and uh, no blacks. So this is... Uh, so it's the black marlin that's the uh, The black marlin, challenge. yeah. The black marlin was the challenge that got me to come 13,000 miles so you and I could fish together. And uh, it, uh, yeah, well, a Ecuador big animal, and uh, big Bahamas sound fairly sort of <laughs> good to me. You know? Well, you know, uh, in the Bahamas, uh, they're this size, and over here, uh, they're this size. So, you know, you got to come where the big ones are. Right. And uh, I'm really looking forward to fishing. And uh, this area is uh, tremendous because if you don't catch a thousand pounder here, you don't talk about it. I, I've been, I was in a crowd uh, last night, and if you hadn't caught a thousand pounder, you couldn't talk. John and Gloria have spent their time awaiting my arrival, doing what all other tourists do, taking in the local sights, including this little monster. You take him home for a pet? No. 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 no you don't want it. Don't want it. <laughs> You mightn't see too many crocodiles being hand-fed back in the States. But obviously it took more than crocodiles and down-under discos to bring a millionaire all the way to Cairns. I'm Arkansas, folks, and that's right in the middle of the, of the United States and, and five or six hundred miles from water. And of course, our country gets awful cold in the winter, and so as, as a vacation-type thing, uh, I started going to blue water and uh, sunlight and started catching some marlin and it's it may be kind of like being on dope uh, once you catch a marlin you want to catch another one and and then after you catch a few more while well, you want to go kind of around the world and catch them and, and goodness knows Kansas has got me now and they're going to get me next year again got my fingers <laughs> Big one you got to make a living to afford one? this, and uh, I raise chickens over there. I'm a chicken farmer, and we raise 22 million chickens at a time. So I, th I think the easiest way to explain what we do is, if you'll count to 10, we've hatched, raised, fed, and killed and processed a truckload of chickens. That's about uh, 600,000 a day right now. It's got life now. And then we're also the world's largest hog farmer, and so we raise some <laughs> hogs too. And, and that allows me to come over here and go fishing in your country. And thank goodness for chickens and hogs. Hey, that's a great. <laughs> that's it. Keep the weight on him. Use your legs more. Okay. I'm not used to using. Yeah, that. Of course, some days you catch fish, and some days you don't. And uh, it's hours sometimes, and maybe days of not much happening. And then you get that moment of panic when that thing hits and you let it free wheel, and then you set the hook, and then it's you and the fish. Then if he's not any bigger than what you've caught in the past, my personal belief is 100 pounds bigger. Why, you get in, you look him in the eye and say, uh-huh, I've got you, and then you, you cut the line and release him and let somebody else have a chance at him. Keep your rod down. Keep my rod down. Come on, 
So many Atlantic blues. What do you think of your first black in well, the Pacific? Well, let me say this. It's twice as big as any fish that I've ever caught before. What do you really, really think of them? Oh, I, it was just tremendous. It's such a big animal when it comes out of the water. But you wanted to let it go. Why? Oh, uh, you know, uh, you Australians have a, a, a saying here. If it's not a 1,000 pounds, it's not mature. And but it's the biggest fish you ever caught. My biggest fish, and I had to say release uh, because it, it's a wonderful animal, and it just it come out of the water, and I just felt like it needs to go back to the Australian waters. Were you driven to that by the way we think about the fish, or what? No, uh, maturity of the animal, and yeah. uh, at uh, you guess seven or eight hundred pounds, and it looked to me like it weighed a ton. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I I just wanted to release the fish, and it, it gave me a tremendous thrill catching it. I just wanted to release. That's wonderful. Every, I think everyone else had the same feeling. Yeah, you made that decision very quickly, Don. I remember him yelling down from the top up there. What do you, what want, do you to want to do with the fish right. within a minute? Straight away, right? Yeah. As soon as we saw what <laughs> yeah. the fish looked like. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, you get a feeling about a fish, and uh, you, catch, you catch them, and sometimes you, you say, Stuart, that, gee, this is a fish I'm mad at, or this is a fish I like. And I like that fish. I'd only been sitting there about 35, 40 minutes, and, and here it come to, to, to give me my welcome to Australia. And so I just felt like that fish needed to go back to Australia. But this funny way that Peter Bristow fishes, where you got to jump up and down that <laughs> on, on that box and go forward and reel and almost fall and feel like you're going to fall into the ocean, is a tremendous way because it, my shoulders uh, and my legs were not sore the next day, where if I'd been fighting a blue marlin, the, the conventional way that we're used to, uh, gee, I couldn't have probably walked around. <laughs> a couple of times there, I, felt, I didn't know you sort of grabbed the chair. I didn't know whether you were sort of losing balance or... Damn or right. Just <laughs> yeah. So I can expect yeah. that if I get one on, uh, you know, that's... Yeah, when you get uh, used to it, you sort of... With my great experience of that first fish, <laughs> <laughs> let, let me say this. If you'll get an arm back and yeah. your body back, with Peter Bristow's way of, of, of fishing it, why uh, I've got more confidence now. I, th I think the next fish that uh, I'm, if I'm lucky enough to catch one here, why will just be super, and I'll have more confidence in how to do his fishing techniques. During the season, Peter hardly sees his family, but he enjoys what little time he has with them. Yeah, fantastic! It's beautiful. Come on in. What sort of percentage of your customers are Australian? And Very small percentage Australian. Mainly American or European. Spaniards love fishing. The next to American Spaniards like fishing. And they're good fishermen too. It's the challenge. And the, the unknown quantity of the fish. You don't know if the next fish you hook up is going to be 200 or 2,000. We're not interested in small fish. We turn them loose. Tag them and let them go. Well, I've caught nine over 1,000 this year already. And released five or six I know we're over a grand you know why take them beautiful creatures all swimming around there lit up beautiful blue and, and you've had a good look at the fish you caught the fish he's alongside the boat what else are you going to do take a photograph of him dead so stick a tag and let him swim are you into fishing yourself sure I never caught a man off my own boat though but there you go I, my uh, bag is uh, finding the fish I get a hell of a kick out of locating the fish and seeing them is, is uh, I believe, a privilege. To see those creatures is a privilege. Uh, you know, percentage-wise, on the people in the world, never would see a black marlin, let alone a thousand-pound black marlin come flying in at a bait, brilliant blue lit up, sight that's just electrifying. Take a bait. It's a privilege to see those creatures. It's a rare sight. 
and you know I've seen a thousand of them, so I've, I've been very privileged. Right. Okay, now if the fish is down deep, the technique of pumping is to is to slide forward in the chair and then get up over the reel on your on your feet. Right, right up. Now come back, and as soon as your ass touches the floor, uh, touches the slide forward again straight away immediately and get up. That's it. Come forward and get up. A little weight there. Now come forward again. That's it. Now you've got your max. You've got maximum weight on the fish because your center of gravity is right there in your in your backside in the, in the harness. And I wind? You wind as you're coming down. Okay, now come forward and go down again. That looks good. Okay. Back. Now forward. That's it. Come forward immediately if you touch that chair. You can take another punt. Now come back. Let him come back. Now come forward again. Straight away. That's good. Come forward again. Stand up. That's it. This is, once again, only when the fish is straight down. Uh -huh. It's something you can only feel yourself. I can't tell what yeah. you're feeling. But you'll know. If you're standing up, you'll know that you've got proper weight on the fish. I mean, Stuart, how do you feel uh, about Are you comfortable there? Uh, yeah. Are you going to be able to pull the thing in now when it hits? I, I think I got the uh, technique together. But obviously, I'm obviously going to have to learn all over again when I get a fish on the other end, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, don't you worry too much about what's going on because I'm going to be screaming instructions at you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> really screaming at you, so don't worry too much about it. Just keep. How's that look? Just keep. That's looking good. Okay, Take mate. Does it feel good? <clears throat> Feels great. Let's go and get one. Looking alive, well, Pete. Marlin are fussy about what they eat, so ideally you use freshly caught bait, and of course you have to catch it yourself. Some fish, like this dolphin no relation to the mammal of the same name, are too good for bait and end up gracing the dinner table back on the Ulysses. Oh, they're pretty. Aren't they just so, and they're great eating, great oh, eating God. fish. You take fresh dolphin and cut him and, and bake him, boy, he's super great looking. And look at the colours on him. Look. That's a nice looking fish. Isn't that beautiful? What a, what a sight. <laughs> Well, that was almost the biggest fish I'd ever caught. <laughs> I hope I had better luck with the marlin. I'm beginning to realise, Tom, that uh, one of the essential things for a game fisherman is patience. Well, really, it teaches you a lot of humility because the fish, they don't know that you're in a hurry to get them and you got a schedule <laughs> to keep. So when you get a chance to go fishing, you fish and uh, you just wait for them. There's a fish on the left. 
It's a Marlin. Get over to the reel, Stuart. He's going to take it. Out of gear. And, and there we go. You've got, you got to bring your drag back a bit and get the rod in the chair. Back. All right, step across the chair. Bring it back to one eight. Drag back the way. Hands the other way around, Stuart. Hands the other way around. That's good. Step across. Step across. Right. Back up there the half. Back up the half. Right. I got you. I got you. Let him go, Pete. Like yeah, I know. Yeah, That's a good 800. Jeez. A good 800. Yeah. No yeah. worries. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the thrill. Uh, look at the water. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's nice to sit and swim away, though. Yeah, uh, right. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. That fish will probably get it done to another day. That's... Oh. 
didn't think they looked that big when you got them up close. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. What's the big one look like? Oh, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> that's 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 what came up is when oh. it looked so big. Yeah, no. That's me dead at the back of the boat. Yeah, yeah oh. that's, that's superb. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, he just come up out of the water. Did you see the jump he did at the back of the boat? Oh, yeah, that's mate. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, what? He came right out. So slow. Yeah, I want to congratulate you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Nice fish. Thanks for your coaching, buddy. It makes you, make you look small when it comes up. Now, now you have a reason. See, this is the reason you come back, Marlin fishing. Right. right. <laughs> You're a chamber of commerce fish, that one. <laughs> I bet you can't wait to get on the chair now, eh? Oh, gee, that's well, at least point. you saw the one that right. got away. Traditionally, as the boat nears port, the marlin flag is flown from the outriggers. One flag for each marlin. And, as my marlin was the last one caught in cans for the season, I feel quite proud to see it go up. Well, I caught my first marlin, and I can say that because among game fishermen, the fish is considered caught if he's hooked and brought to the boat. At this point, 99% of the fish are released, having been tagged for research purposes. It's a couple of hours now since I hooked my little baby and I still feel slightly stunned. I just, I didn't think they were that big. As Peter Bristow said to me a couple of days ago, it's a rare privilege to see one of these magnificent creatures eyeball to eyeball, so to speak. And I know Don and Gloria Tyson will be back here next year and I can now begin to understand what it is that brings somebody halfway around the world and 13,000 miles just to have this mind-blowing experience. To see the thousand pound black marlin come flying into the bait, brilliant blue lit up, a sight that's just electrifying. Take a bait, it's a privilege to see those creatures. It's a rare sight. <laughs>